Hey everyone, so today we're going to do a little bit of light pruning on this. This is that Finger Lake Super Hardy Peach that last year I went. We got some scions actually late in the summer and grabbed those, brought them over and did some chip bud grafting and I'll link those videos here below. But today we're looking to go ahead and get some of this as grafting material. The buds are starting to swell just a little bit so I want to make sure I get these today. I'm running out of time on doing that. I don't want any leaves coming out uh, to lose any of that moisture and I want some dormant buds to be available when I go ahead and do some grafting of these uh, probably in about a month or so. So branches like these here are good candidates. Uh, they've got quite a good amount of new growth and they've got you know a little bit thicker up here where they've got single buds uh, in each spot. So I'm going to go ahead and take some of these and I'm actually going to snip where there's the outward facing bud here. Uh, and where there's an outward bud facing here and take those and, and store those up. So my pruning location is based on how I want that tree to grow after I've cut it. And then I can clean up the scion to whatever length I want it to be afterwards. You can see actually I made a cut right here last year and then we've got these three branches that were all stimulated to grow out because I made the cut right here. So hopefully it, it it's helpful to see that where, where you make these cuts, you're going to have shoots come on out. And then as you move further down, you're just seeing smaller uh, little bits here that, that are going to have some flowers to them and also be supporting growth. And that's, that's ideal. If you can keep, if you can keep the whole branch putting out flowers all throughout, uh, then that's, that's going to be great. But the further that these go, the stronger that this main branch needs to be in order to support that weight. And this one I'll make quite a bit shorter so that it, it more acts like these others where it's got, um, where it's just going to have a small amount of fruit close to the main limb. So then we'll probably see these two shoot out and I'm going to go ahead and shorten, I'm going to actually just take this one off because these likely aren't uh, flower buds at all. And I don't want an additional branch growing under, under here either. So that'll be all I get off of here. Then this one, kind of the same thing, where I don't want to let it go too far. Go for there to get that, and uh, right here for that one. And this one. And I really didn't want this one that's here on the top at all, because uh, that can start growing straight up and kind of stealing that uh, main nutrients and growth. Uh, from the branch if it starts shooting up and trying to be its own trunk So I just got rid of that entirely because that lateral growth is really where you're gonna see most of that fruit develop And back here we have an example of one that did grow straight up So see this one right here was growing straight up and had quite a bit more to it So I went ahead and removed that and just left a few of these here to get just some fruit and then after these bear fruit this year, then I'll probably cut that off so it doesn't continue to grow out. And the final pruning I'll do on this branch, this one here is going to become a crossing branch. And so I don't want that to even happen. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that entirely. Looks like there was only going to be two or three pieces of fruit off of it anyway. Uh, and this one also is going way over here, but I will let these two survive and make fruit this year and kind of maybe help provide some sun protection down here. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and do a lot more cuts and pruning and kind of let you see that. I won't talk really about any individual cuts because it's all about the same thing, where I'm really just looking to, to thin down the canopy, get rid of branches growing in toward the center, and just leave a few of those where I see them where they might be beneficial in preventing sunburn on the tree and uh, get, just get that overall canopy reduced down in size because I don't want all my fruit way up in the air and I want it to just be easily accessible with plenty of light and air penetration throughout the whole canopy. You can also be on the lookout while you're doing this for the tips of the different branches, especially the newer growth. If you see areas where there looks to be some damage, go ahead and cut a few extra inches there and that is easily where some different types of, uh, I think, oriental moths and things can get in there and burrow themselves in. And uh, you don't want to keep those. But if you just get rid of a few inches off the end, then that's going to get rid of wherever they're burrowed uh, and be 
be pretty helpful in uh, getting rid of that pest for you. So here's your evidence right here that you've got some borers or insects going in there. These are what I'm looking to get rid of. I only actually found two places where we've got any of that, so I don't think it was too bad. Probably helped, we really didn't have any fruit last year. Here's uh, the other branch that had some right here. There's some on the, the end right here, as well as some uh, on this piece here as well. So really it was just those three spots on here that actually had that, and that's pretty nice to know I don't have too much of that problem. Probably helps we have chickens out here now, and they can help uh, eat insects and bugs for us. I also wanted to say some of your best scion wood is going to be up here on the top of the canopy. That's where it was reaching out the most. And so we've even got this branch like here. And see all along that stem here, you know, it's covered in all of these different bloom spots. Uh, but then you get up to the top and it just goes pretty crazy, pretty long. But there's a lot of material there to work with, so that's going to make it a lot easier to use for grafting. And like I said with the branches, that's that's the best indicator really that you've got a good enough amount of light coming in. So in here, even though this is a very you know full branch right along here, if you look, I've still got right here um, another one that's going to want to put out a, some fruit, you know, another one up here. And so there's enough getting in here that those are going to be all right. So I want to make sure I keep things thinned out enough on this branch that those are going to continue to want to be there and I don't want to crowd those out. Another thing you might look to get rid of if you have a lot of branches like this. This one's in an area there's nothing else going to be here so I'm going to leave it right now but if this were in another area and I have to go this far before I get where I might have some fruit then this isn't a, a branch I need to be keeping so be looking for that. Be looking for these branches that really aren't putting much out for you, you might as well get rid of those and, and let there be more room for, for better growth and, and better fruit production. I've also got one that's that's been let go a little bit too long probably. This one right here it goes up pretty high. So we're gonna go ahead and cut that down and uh, get rid of that now. There are several fruit buds along the way so it's got enough light to be doing that. I could leave that. But I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one here because if I give this another year to grow, then the wound is gonna be that much larger here. And I really don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my pruners here, get right at that branch collar and get rid of that. Especially if you're pruning a little bit later, be gentle pulling pieces out because you might knock off fruit buds and leaf buds in there that you wanted to keep. But yeah, now you can see it looks a lot more open in there. There's still a little bit of trimming to do, or at least a little trimming that I want to do. But there really aren't a ton of hard and fast rules that you have to follow, except to just make sure that your branches aren't getting so large and away from the trunk that they're gonna break under the weight of the fruit, and then that they've got so much open space without any leaf cover that they're gonna get sunburned, and that will lead to you know, that destruction as well. So, Overall, just kind of make sure that you you get a good balanced structure of your tree. I always prune for tree structure, and then fruit production is a secondary objective for me. Because if this tree makes it an additional five years because of my pruning, I feel a lot better about that than I feel about you know getting an extra five pieces of fruit this year. But that's just my personal opinion on that. If your tree is about dead and you you're gonna give up on it anyway. You might as well prune to get that last year of fruit, but for me, it's always more worth it, especially a tree that's as healthy as this one still is to, to make sure I'm pruning for long life. And when I you do that good amount of pruning, it can lead to new scions, and and so that way you can you know continue to propagate that tree and you know make a, another tree that you could replace it with if the one were to die. So I've seen the advice online sometimes that you actually should prune your friends uh, orchard and they should prune yours and one of those reasons is right here this branch looks pretty good at first but it's so high up here and I don't want to be reaching this fruit I'm actually going to prune it to where these two branches here become then uh, the branches that are going to have the fruit uh, and these I might even pull down just a little bit further uh, because I want to keep all the fruit lower and I don't want the tree to just continue to climb up so you have to sometimes make those hard cuts and hard decisions uh, but you know, if, if you weren't the owner of it, you might not feel so bad about it. 
So I'm going to cut it right here, and all of that growth is then diverted into these two instead. And then thinking about that, they're going to want to do that, and that's why I want to pull them in a little bit as well. And there we go. There's the top of your tree. And then with these, I'm going to shorten this one back to this branch here. And I want this one to be fairly even with that, so I'll shorten it down to this branch here. Because these two are going to be in competition with each other. And then there's uh, some bare space here, so I'll bring that back to a, some fruit wood. And same with this one. So now this branch is diverting growth into these two, and then each of these branches has got some small branches it's diverting its health into. So we'll see that growth come into these, but hopefully this will have held it back. I've also got this lower branch here that I'm gonna hold back as well. Common pruning advice on stone fruits is to take off a third, so when you have to make a cut like this, don't feel so bad. And these things are going to push out so much more growth anyway that uh, it's not going to be a problem. And this actually helps keep the tree from overextending itself on that fruit too. And each of these fruit that are going to still be here that are going to grow, uh, hopefully, this year, uh, those each can get a lot larger uh, and uh, be a lot higher quality fruit. All right, well, I wanted to show the finished product here. So... As you can see, there's a lot of different shortened branches in here. They will shoot back easily, so do not be concerned if you get to that point. Hopefully against the clouds here, you can see how I've shortened those. Went for kind of that bowl vase shape, but really we're filling in a lot of that airspace up there, but nothing is, is too close to one another. If I'm to take this tree here by the branches and shake it, you know, I don't hear anything. That's a, another thing you can do on a smaller tree like this. If you can shake these limbs and you hear them hitting against each other, you know you've got a little bit more pruning to do. And you just find where those are intersecting each other and uh, get that thinned out. All right, so our final step today, let's see what we've got here, what's worthwhile. And it kind of depends somewhat on how you're gonna graft. If you're gonna do some whip and tongue grafting, you might you know, be able to do something a little smaller. So if we've got one like this, you know, this is going to be really easy on the end here to, to get your cut. You know, you can keep this if you want it. With some of this bud grafting, I think I'd prefer just something a little bit better. One like this would be pretty good for bud grafting, though it does have multiple buds here. You might want one with singles. All right, so here's a good one right here. And up here we've got single buds starting right here. So we'll snip here. And then the rest of this here should be great. And I'm going to get a bunch more like that. And these will be great ones for either type of grafting. You'll be able to get a good bot off of this, or you could go ahead and just, you know, do a whip and tongue with it. Get somewhere close to a pencil size thickness, just easier to work with. Uh, these slide through on the cuts a little bit more than an apple would and, or a pear. So, you know, you might want just a little bit thicker material there to, to work with. Uh, you could also use one a little bit older like this. You know, I'm going to keep it back and... Uh, see how that does as well. You would just, you know, not want any fruit to set probably on that first year if it's a bench graft and you're trying to grow your tree. If you're grafting it into another tree though, you could probably get away with that and be fine as well. So let's get a few more of these. All right, so again, I don't need very many. So I'm just gonna put them in a plastic bag and I'm gonna put some damp sawdust in there with them that should help them retain their moisture without causing them to mold or anything like that. You don't want any moisture to be very apparent in there. You don't want any water droplets to be visible on your plastic or anything like that. So, you know, keep an eye on it the first few days. Make sure you haven't, you know, done too much. And other than that, you should be good to just uh, leave it in there. You could also, if you don't have sawdust, use just a, a very, very lightly damp paper towel. You don't want anything that's going to pull moisture from this, but you don't want anything that's going to put moisture onto these. So just be careful what you're what you're doing with that. And um, I found that you can get mold a lot faster on paper towel than you can from sawdust. So I've stuck with those. So anyway, I hope this has been helpful and uh, we'll catch up with you guys whenever we get to grafting some of these and, and seeing how those grafts are doing. Thanks for watching.